The glowing light of dawn over the Oakland Hills is shining, and it sends a shaft of sun over the city as it's rising, and the golden rays illuminate a school in its center, and its radiance is palpable to everyone who enters. Matt West is a school where we change the way and open doors. Our students leave here knowing that we are the ones we've waited for. Relationships, social justice, internships, and mental health. We work to build community where everyone can be themselves. We know that every student has the power and the vision. We can navigate the world to build experience and wisdom. We can analyze oppression, learn to fight for liberation. We can deconstruct the barriers and lead a generation. We are small, but we are mighty. We are a family that is thriving a community that lifts up every voice until it's shining. We strategize, we organize, we work to change the world. We visualize, we realize the dreams that were the fur. And we're lifted up and gifted by the efforts of our elders. And we followed their footsteps and seen further from their shoulders. Both the eagle and the panther joined together in their vision Black and brown is unified in the Rainbow Coalition. We are si se puede. We are power to the people. We organize, we strategize with students at the center. That's why we named that campus for our students after Warta. We visualize, we realize, we work to free each other. That is why we named that campus for our students after Huggins. Inspired by the activists who fought to pave the way, our little school works to help our students make the change. Some might call it a school, but it's more, you'll see. It's the internship social justice, it's the community. It's the real world learning and relationships. It's the seeing the whole student and letting them choose their path. It's the one-on-one -on -one attention, the focus on wellness, the passions and interests, the family connection. Matt West is a place where we're breaking the chains empowering students to be agents of change. We visualize, we realize the dreams that were deferred. We strategize, we organize, we work to change the world. I hope you all enjoyed that artistic overview of our school. And now I get to introduce the two amazing young people who narrated the video and, our, and two of our spectacular emerging revolutionaries, Iris and Nadira, who will be moderating our conversation this evening. Please give them some virtual love. Hi, um, I'm Nadira Shafon. I am a 10th grader on the Huggins campus. And last year, my internship was at Bay Peace. I am so honored to be here and to introduce the amazing Erica Huggins. Erica Huggins is a human rights activist, poet, author, and Black Panther Party leader, as well as former political prisoner, who for the past 36 years has lectured throughout the United States and internationally. And I'll pass it to Iris. Good evening, everyone. My name is Iris Vasquez. I am a 10th grader on the Dolores Huerta campus, and my last internship was at Mime Troop. Just like Nadira, I am so humbled and excited to introduce the amazing Dolores Huerta. Um, Dolores Huerta is the president and founder of Dolores Huerta Foundation and co-founder of the United Farm Workers of America with Sister Chavez. And um, thank you both for joining us this evening. I'll be asking our first question, which is, as educators who have been familiar with our country's public school system for several years, what do you identify as the most salient needs our, of our school current public school system? Ms. Huggins, do you mind responding first to this question? And then Ms. Huerta? Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for your introductions. And hello, Dolores. 
Hi, Erica. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah. So, um, so I I really appreciate this question. Is it okay if I have more than one salient point? Okay. Um, and by the way, Nadira and Aris, you're so beautiful. By that I mean they're the the light of your curiosity and wonder and your presence is really felt. So thank you. Thank you to everybody who put this event together and particularly Whitney Dwyer. Thank you. Um, so there's so many things that we can do. We are um, improving our schools as we go. Met West is a testimony to that. There didn't used to be small schools like Met West, and now there are, and that tell students the truth. And we can do more of that across the districts and I would say across the country, because there are still places where equal distribution of the wealth is not happening when it comes to individual schools and school districts. In other words, what I'm saying is that a family should not have to be wealthy in order for that school to be endowed with the wealth of materials and books and computers and other necessities for 21st century education. I also believe that instructors um, can be educated in equity, diversity, and inclusion. This is possible so that people understand, Iris, why it's important to you to be able to glide back and forth between Spanish and English, should you like, and that you are not boxed in by someone's notion of who you are. And Nadira, that you can bring your complete and whole um, self, all of your identities to the classroom and be respected for it. So these are some of the things that come to mind having worked very closely with public schools over the years in a, a number of large cities like San Francisco, Oakland, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, Washington, DC, and so on. So it's the same everywhere we go that the schools that are named, for instance, after Malcolm X or Thurgood Marshall are often the schools that are have a limited resources and they're population of teachers are not given the same respect in training as could be. So that's a beginning answer. There's a lot more. And Dolores, uh, would you like to take it from here? Well, yes. <clears throat> uh, I, the education that students are receiving at Matt West, as you said, Erica is the kind of an education that all of our students all over the United States uh, should be receiving. Uh, I'm here in Bakersfield, California. I don't know if you know where Bakersfield is at, but it's part of the Central Valley. Uh, this is where a lot of the food for, for California is grown. And not only California, because a lot of it is exported all over the world. Uh, but when it comes to our students, they are not getting an equitable education. Uh, we had to sue uh, the Dolores with the Foundation. We sued the Kern High School District because they expelled 2,100 students, black and brown students, in one year, in one year. And uh, we won the lawsuit uh, from 2,100 expulsions. Uh, we got that down to 21, 21. The large majority, 70% of the students are students of color. Unfortunately, the school district has 80% uh, uh, of the teachers are Anglo. And a lot of them, uh, they recruit from the South and uh, places where there are no uh, people of color. So they, there's a big disconnect there, you know? And we're still working on that. We're not through with that lawsuit yet because there's other things that they have to change. But uh, yeah, they, they were found to have implicit bias uh, in that school. But that's not just that school. 
throughout the whole Central Valley, 40% of the kids that are being expelled and suspended in the whole state of California, the school districts that are doing the most of that are in the Central Valley of California, where the kids are farm worker kids, the kids that really need the most support of any kids at all, okay? So this is what our foundation is doing like you, we're, we're working on stopping the school to prison pipeline, which we know is real. And not only exists in the Central Valley of California, it exists throughout the whole United States of America. So these are the changes that we're in our foundation. We're active in 20 different school districts, okay? Uh, right now, organizing parents and students to fight the, the system. And we are making some, uh, some gains in California City, which is up in the high desert. You probably never heard of California City, uh, but in that, which is mostly an African-American uh, population, uh, they were suspending eight out of 10 black students, eight out of 10. And uh, we have changed that somewhat. We have a new superintendent there and uh, they now have a African-American advisory committee so that we can stem some of those racist practices. So we, education is, of course, I think is the foundation of our country. We've got to bring in ethnic studies into our elementary schools. We're not going to have it in the high schools, everybody. It looks like we finally got it. It's going to be mandatory. And people have to have, they have to take ethnic studies. Unfortunately, it's not till the high school level, but we know that children are tainted with racism in kindergarten. Okay. So now there are other states that do start ethnic studies in kindergarten. And I think that's one of the things that we have to fight for. Because if we're going to end, if we're going to end racism, we got to start it when the kids are little because people are not born racist. They get that from their parents or their culture, what they grow up in. And so that's, of course, one of the big fights that everybody's involved in right now. But I do believe that we are going to be able to change it. And education is one of the ways that we're going to do it. Si se puede. We can make it happen. Thank you both so much for your graceful and powerful responses. Moving on to our next question. In 2021, we witnessed black and brown falling at the hands of the police violence, experiencing higher rates of COVID-19 and extreme poverty. In your opinion, what can coalition building needs to happen between black and brown communities and how do we get there? And then either of you can start with this question. You want to go first, Erica? Not particularly. You can you can go ahead. Okay. Well, I was going to say, and the reason that uh, Erica and I know each other uh, is because way back in the '60s and the '70s, uh, when uh, we were working about against some of these same issues, uh, we were able to bond together. Uh, the work that we were doing then with the United Farm Workers and with the uh, Black Panther Party. Uh, there's some great stories. I have to tell you. As we went across the United States, well, first of all, I'll start with, with the Oakland area, okay? Uh, the members of the Black Panther Party, the young people like yourselves, uh, you know, we had a we had a boycott of California grapes and we didn't want any, any of the stores to carry uh, to carry grapes. Well, guess who got the grapes out of the stores in the city of Oakland, okay, and LA? It was the Black Panther Party that did that. And not only there, we went across, uh, we traveled across the country. We actually were in Chicago with Freddie Hampton and the people there in New York City. And I can tell you that in, in New York City in Harlem, which is of course uh, the heart of the uh, black community there, there were no grapes in any stores in that area. And not only that, but the Puerto Rican community there, the young lords and the young activists uh, at your age, of your age, uh, they said, don't worry about the Bronx, we're gonna take care of the grapes here, and they did. And so we know that when we come together, that we have a really a strong bond and a really strong uh, a force and power, uh, but we just have to get more people engaged and kind of use that nonviolent action uh, like boycotts uh, uh, to get a little bit of justice. I, I think that coalition building, thank you, Dolores. I think that coalition building is something that is crucial. It's a necessity. Um, there is no one black community. There is no one Latinx community. We are all um, as diverse as anything else in nature. 
However, what we found in the 60s and 70s and what is true today is that when we have similar conditions, and we do, conditions of poverty and the conditions brought on by systemic racism, we need to work together. And whatever is a barrier to us working together, it needs to be flushed. There's no purpose for it. They're probably old stories that were untrue in the first instance and then passed on to us by people who were not being very honest or compassionate. So the Black Panther Party intentionally formed coalitions with everybody. And sometimes it didn't even matter if we were in absolute agreement with them, but they were people who were fighting for similar things. And now that we live in the 21st century, it's even more important not to be in silo formation, in little boxed in groups that we work together. Um, I was thinking, Dolores, as you were talking about how great it would be if we spoke together publicly and in places where um, laws, decisions, policies, and procedures are renewed or determined that black and brown people show up together. And by brown, we don't just mean Latinx people. We mean indigenous people. Mm -hmm. We mean Asian American people, which includes South Asian people. And we have such similar histories and and I feel like it would be a really wonderful thing to have courses that talked about movements within the United States and around the world that had coalition building, which is community building and community um, honoring as a part of its curriculum. So I really appreciate this question, having worked um, for instance, when we found out that Oakland had the uh, a huge a, a huge rate of infant mortality and maternal morbidity, in other words, that children were dying in the first year of their lives, if not before, and that mothers were dying in childbirth, who did I go to? The Third World Women's Alliance. That organization doesn't exist anymore as such. But these were all women of color um, willing to work with the Black Panther Party to form that coalition. And we went to the County Board of Supervisors and with parents, with pregnant moms, with moms with babies, and we said, the OBGYN department at Highland Hospital, the county hospital, needs to change. Mothers don't need to be birthing their babies in the in the emergency room. It needs to change. And that was decades ago. But the numbers of us working together made all the difference. And the women spoke, just like the activists. And they told their stories. And there were people who listened and change happens. So I feel like coalition is just one of the ways that communities can engage in a loving way to uplift everybody. And we don't have to know everything about each other. We can just assume as human beings that we all need to work together. So thank you for that question. Yeah, so Walter Fauntroy, who worked with Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, he had a statement that he said, and I think this is so true. He said that we are the majority. When you take women and you take people of color, and then I like to add white men of conscience, okay? White men of conscience. Women, people of color, white men of conscience, we are the majority. Uh, but we know we, ha we have to uh, continue to, uh, to remember that and to act on that. But we know that our, our job is to make sure 
that the people that we know that they connect and that they become part of the movement because we are in such a critical state in our country right now where we are literally facing fascism. That's what's happening right now. We're facing fascism. And unless we all get engaged in the democratic process, and I know a lot of young people say, well, I don't want to vote because it's, I'm voting for the establishment. You know, well, you know what? We have to become the establishment. You know, we have to take those positions those public offices and school boards and city councils and supervisors so we can be the decision makers. And so that's really important for young people to understand that it is so important to march and to protest and to boycott. Like I was talking about the great boycott uh, for the farm workers who didn't have toilets in the fields when we started or cold drinking water. But everybody who that boycotted grapes, and I know, as I said, I'm sure some of your parents uh, probably didn't let you eat any grapes when you were little. I guess that's probably the a generation, another generation behind. But these are the people that made it possible for farm workers uh, to have toilets in the field. And so this is why it's important that we continue building coalitions and working together because the challenges that we have are so huge. And this is the only way that we could, that we can win. Wow, I don't know about everyone else, but that gave me chills. Thank you both so much. Um, moving on to our next question, uh, it's what role do you see activism playing in education? And can activism be taught? Um, anyone can start first. How about Ms. Huggins? So activism is already in us. What do I mean by that? When I was a little girl, I asked my mother so many questions about how the world works that one day she said to me, okay, Erica, sugar, that's enough questions for today. You can ask me some more questions tomorrow. Because I wanted to know why, as I was growing up in DC, as this little black girl, why is it that as we headed toward the place where the Capitol is and the State Department, and the government buildings and the fine houses, the people look so happy, even when it was snowing and cold. And where I lived, there were people without heat, children without shoes and food, and they couldn't come to school because they didn't have shoes. I mean, I couldn't figure out how this could be, who, who was making decisions that would allow for this. And my mother explained in her own way, because she was raised on a farm in North Carolina, mm. that one of 11 children, she explained that it was intentional, that it wasn't accidental, that for black people, it started with the enslavement of Africans. And though it ended on paper, it didn't end in the ways in which people are forced to live and the conditions of poverty that they're forced to live in. And so it was in me as a little girl, all I needed was to have my questions answered and my mother did that. And there were, my teachers did not do that. So, because they were taught that the best thing for a teacher to do is just give the facts. But you see, we are whole human beings. We are physical, we are spiritual, we are emotional, we are mental. And we bring everything that we are to the classroom. And so it's important that we ask questions, not to shame anyone, not to make anyone wrong, not, not a question from judgment, but to ask for facts. And when I ran the Oakland Community School, which was started by the Black Panther Party, we told the children, ask questions, investigate, learn about the world that you live in. Don't let a person tell you they have the only answer. I think that we have an idea of activism, Iris, that it is something that comes with a picket sign only. 
But what about the artivists like Amanda Gorman who read that beautiful poem, remember? Mm -hmm. That's an activist, but she wasn't carrying a sign. She wasn't protesting as such, but she was protesting the larger inequities. So we can all be activists. Can it be learned? Yes, it can. A dear friend of mine took me from the historical black college that I was attending long before I joined the Black Panther Party. He took me from Philadelphia to Delaware and had me give out flyers about voting and flyers about equal opportunities and all kinds of things. And where did he take me? To bars and grocery stores and all kinds of places to be with real people. So we just really have to recognize that activism is not a, a cerebral, a brainy affair. It is our hearts speaking about humanity and every one of us can do that. I think in education, it has been squelched because public schools have been for a very long time, the environment for reproducing that which is the status quo. Met West is not like that. And I can think of other schools around the country that are not like that. And most of them have very open-minded, big hearted people at the helm. And for things to change within school districts, there have to be activists as decision makers. If you understand the bigger definition of activism. Well, uh, Erica, uh, you really laid it out there because uh, activism has a, a lot of different levels. As you mentioned before, uh, picketing is one, marching is one, protesting is another one. But I'm going to add one other uh, way that we have to be, that we really truly have to be activists. And that is in just uh, contacting your local public representatives. That's right. And uh, right now we have some uh, legislation I'm going to tell you about. Uh, one of them is we're trying to get uh, health care for the undocumented workers in California. There's a bill called AB4, and maybe somebody can put that in the chat, AB4, that we're going to ask you all to write letters to the governor. And when I say letters, I mean like an email to uh, Governor Gavin Newsom and say, we need to have health care for all of our undocumented people uh, here in California. Right now, uh, the uh, people up to 26 years of age, they have health care but we want it for our elders and people in the middle, because really we cannot have a healthy California unless everybody is covered by Medi-Cal. Now, a lot of times they say, where's the money? Well, you know what, right now there is funding uh, to be able to give everybody healthcare in California, okay? So that's an important measure, AB4. And then I'll, all you ladies out there, guess what? In the US Senate right now, they are considering equal rights for all the women. Now, many of you are thinking, oh, did we already have that? No, we don't. Because the women's organizations have been trying to get an amendment to our constitution of the United States that women have equal rights to men. And right now it is in the US Senate. So we can make history in 2021 by getting our senators to vote to have equal rights amendment. Now, I know in California, we have two great senators. We have Senator Dianne Feinstein. We have our first Latino Senator, Alex Padilla. So they're gonna vote the right way. But we have people, a lot of you have friends or relatives in other states, and they're the ones that we need to get them to vote on this, okay? So, and there is a website for that. If somebody can put that in the chat also, it's eraies2021.org. E-R-A-Y-E-S-2021.org, okay? Because we are one of the few countries in the world that have not signed on to have equal rights for women. Would you believe that? The United States of America, one of the few countries in the world that has not signed to this really, really important piece of legislation, okay? And uh, so, and, and uh, when I talk, oh, there's another one, uh, the For the People Act, 
uh, because a lot of states in the South, as you have heard, are passing all kinds of legislation to make it hard for people to vote. It's people of color, they don't want them to vote because they know that uh, a lot of these right wingers, uh, uh, they lost uh, the last election, okay? So anyway, we have to try to, and I wanna share this with you, Michael Moore, uh, who is a filmmaker, uh, I saw him and this is what he said. He said, when we wake up in the morning, we wash our face, we brush our teeth, and then we call our senator. Okay, so if we can remember that, because it only takes a few minutes uh, to go to your computer and send an email to your senator, or an email to the governor, or an email to the president, and that is part of activism also. Also, please get involved in political campaigns, because this is where you learn what politics is all about. You know, we're gonna have a recall campaign here in California, it looks like. Uh, some of the Republicans are trying to take out Governor Newsom. And so this will really be a really great opportunity uh, to learn uh, how to do campaigns. And so whether it's phone banking or knocking on doors, you know, sending out emails, all of these different things, because this is how democracy works. And this is of course what's being threatened right now uh, by people that don't want us to make progress these are the people, the, the, the climate change deniers, uh, the ones that want to keep the guns. Uh, we can go on and on. Uh, they're against uh, what we are for, uh, like the ethnic studies that we're trying to talk about getting into our schools. They're against labor unions. The, they're against women's right, reproductive rights. And, uh, you know, so we have to do the work to make sure that we keep going forward and not backwards in, in some of the progress and some of the changes that we need for our society. So again, become an activist and but and if we, when we say what can you do guess what recruit other young people to help you become activists and, and they don't all have to belong at met west because i'm sure that all of the met west students are activists but some of your friends that are not fortunate enough to go to your school you know get them involved also because you are doing them a big favor when you get them to become activists also Thank you so much for both of your responses. So much detail, and I hope you guys are all taking those tips, keeping them in your mind and acting on them yourselves. Our last question is, you've been, so, you've been leading social change for decades. What hopes do you have for us as young student activists? And then either of you can take this one. Do you want to take it, Erica? Sure. I was really thinking about this question, Nadira and Iris. Because often young people have people preaching at them about everything. And I just wish you all good things in your lives, first of all. You and your classmates and your friends. I want a world where there is no possibility of you being stopped for walking, shot for running, or killed in any other way. I want for you that as women, because that's who you are, that you are able to own your bodies completely. That you are able to walk with your sense of your own beauty and wellness and power and not be challenged for it. I was just thinking about, as Dolores was talking, about how our vote got us, Elon Omar and Alexandria right? Look what voting did. Look who we got. Those are amazing women. And that's what's so upsetting to the people who don't want anything to change. Because there are brave and beautiful young people out there who are willing to step forward. I would like for you to find mentors as you navigate life who will tell you the truth, encourage you, and 
and help you to find joy on the saddest day, on the day when your only feeling is one of anger because yet another violent thing has occurred to a black or brown person or a disabled person or an LGBTQ person or a person who represents all of those identities in one body. When you're at a low point, I want you to have people, not just one, but people you can call who will help you through it. I didn't have very many of those, but the ones that I had, I treasure them, even though many of them are no longer alive because they told me that my life mattered, that my voice was important and that being someone who serves the people, body and soul, as we used to say in the Black Panther Party is doing not only a good thing, but in a way, a sacred thing. If you look at the word sacred, I want you to look it up after tonight. Just look it up. You'll see what I mean. Because we are driven by love. We're not driven by hatred. Mo I, I, very few activists I have met, and I've met many over my life around the world, are driven by hatred. And if they are, it's because they've been hurt and they have unhealed wounds. I wish you continued mental health. We don't talk enough about mental and emotional wellness in our communities. And when I was gathered with Wanda, Oscar Grant's mother who started a foundation for mothers and fathers who lost their children to police and other gun violence. I heard three women, three mothers tell the story of their children, their sons and daughters who were having episodes due to a shift in medication or when they stopped taking their medication. And those three were shot in front of their parents. We need to have a world in which people can be exactly as they are and get the support that they need. And I believe that people like the two of you can do something really big and beautiful in this world. I don't know what it is, it's not my business to know, but somewhere in your heart, you probably know what you will need to do. And I wanna support you, but I also want you to have all the support that you need because people like Dolores and the, her foundation and people like me and the people at MetWest have your, your wellness, your brilliance, your goodness at heart. So I hope that something I've just said settled with you. I get I guess I can second uh, everything that Eric has said. Uh, the one thing I want to say to all of you is that uh, as we go out there into the world, uh, think of yourself as healers. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, racism is a sickness. It is. And we have a sick society right now because we have so many people that have been uh, tainted uh, by racism and have had their minds colonized, you know? So when you go out there and you talk to people, uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to bring up the conversation, even if they don't. And uh, sometimes also their minds are tainted uh, uh, by discriminating against other people. Uh, like Erica said, members of our LGBTQ community, right? Or again, women that wanna fight for the reproductive rights, the, the right to abortion. So you don't be afraid to bring up these subjects. And uh, as you go out there and uh, remember that you have power that you, and don't ever let anybody get in your way when you're trying to do the right thing, when you're trying to help people. His, history has shown us that it is the young people like yourselves that have really made the social progress that we need. 
You know, right now there's a movie out there about the Chicago Five. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, this is about Tom Hayden, uh, Bobby Seale, who was from Oakland, uh, in the work that they did uh, uh, to end the Vietnam War. You know, all of these young people, all of the United States that started marching, and yet guess, guess what they did? They ended the war. Can you imagine that? They ended the war. We know that the civil rights movement, it was young people that did the sit-ins in the, in the, sit in the lunch counters. And uh, John Lewis, when he was young, you know, getting out there, getting beat up by the, by, by the police as he did, but he never gave up uh, so that uh, people and uh, black people in the South could get the right to vote. So sometimes young people tell me, I wish I would have been alive in the 60s. I tell them, guess what? The 60s are back in steroids, okay? 60s are back in steroids. And now I think we have so many uh, tools to help us. Uh, when Erica and I were around organizing in the 60s, we, yeah, we didn't have the internet, okay? <laughs> we had to do it one by one to get people. Now we have seen that you can, you know, mobilize people very quickly, uh, you know, bring together very quickly and make your de the demonstrations, but we still have to do some of that one-on-one -on -one healing. And so never be afraid to bring up that conversation about things that need to happen. We see the young people are in the forefront right now. It was this young woman who took that video when they were killing George Floyd. I mean, can you imagine? She stood there and took that video literally and, and the protests were not here just in Minneapolis or in the United States. They went all over the world and people are fighting for racial justice. So you have so much power. We have this young woman from uh, Germany, Greta, uh, who is uh, calling the attention to global warming, something that we have to pay attention to because it's going to affect all of us, you know, when, when we destroy our planet uh, because of fossil fuels. So it is you, the young people that are leading the way right now, as you are the ones that give us a lot of hope. I can say that for myself. And so again, your job as healers and recruiters and get more and more activists uh, to come and join the movement, to join the social justice movement. This is what we need. And we've got to bring it again. We talked about education, got to bring it into our schools. So your friends, many of them are not lucky enough to have the kind of education that you have. So you got to share your education, which you've learned with them. And then, you know, don't be afraid to go to the school board and uh, protest or, to tell them what you need and get everybody to do the same thing. Because right now in the state of California, every school district has a mandate that they have to hear from community members. You know, they have to hear from students, they have to hear from parents. That is part of them getting their money uh, directly from the state, but they have to listen uh, to students and to parents and community members if they're not doing the right thing. So. Again, don't be afraid to use that power to step up and speak out. Thank you both for all of your wisdom tonight, the grace and the power in your words. As I said before, it's just, it's amazing to feel and to hear. And so really appreciate you coming out here and telling us everything. Um, really helps and it makes me feel so inspired and a lot of other young people that are here listening tonight and a lot of everyone listening tonight. Um, I pass it to Iris. Yeah, um, Ms. Huerta, thank you for your light and your voice today. It, I'm sure it touched many hearts. I know it touched minds and Ms. Huggins, thank you for your wisdom and your smile do incredible wonders for us. And both of you, thank you for your inspiration today. I know I will take some, all of this with me and from now on. Um, and now I would like to turn the virtual floor <laughs> over to our principal, Logan Manning, to share with us the impact of your donation this evening. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, my heart and mind are full um, and I hope yours are too. And as you know, this year has taken such a toll on all of us and particularly on our young people and their mental health and well-being. So as we look with hope towards next school year, 
Um, and as a school that really believes in holistically supporting our students as whole human beings, we know that we have a lot of work to do to welcome back our students with love and intention. And we're asking you tonight to please make a donation uh, to support our school um, and to enable us not only to expand access to mental health services for young people, but also to open more possibilities um, for, again, the social emotional well being of our young people for retreats, um, different grade level experiences, school culture building events. Um, for some examples, your donation of $30 would pay for a hygiene or wellness kit for a young person. Your donation of $200 um, could pay for mutual aid to support a family in need. Your donation of $500 or more can support a grade level experience or advisory retreat to continue to warmly welcome back um, and invite our students back to in-person learning to support their social emotional well-being and mental health. So we thank you so much. Um, the link to donate is in the chat and we ask that you will please um, donate to support MetWest students and their holistic well-being. Um, Ms. Manning, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I would like to end with a chant if I could. For the students, I would like to end in a chant. Uh-huh, great. Okay. It's, a, it's a really simple one. And I don't know if people can unmute themselves, but um, this is what, my chant, okay? I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm going to ask you, who's got the power? We and do. I want you to say, we've got the power. And then I'm gonna ask you, what kind of power? And you're gonna answer people power. Can we do that? Yes. Okay, yes. so let's go. Can you repeat it one more time? Pardon me? Can you repeat it one more time? Okay. I'm gonna ask the question, who's got the power? I want you we to got say, the power. we've got the power. And when I say, what kind of power? I want you to say people power. <laughs> All right, can we do that? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay. Who's got the power? We've got, got the power. 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 <laughs> what kind of power? People, People power. power. All right, are we going to go out there and organize our nation? Are we going to go out there and organize and heal our nation? What do we say? ¿Se puede o no se puede? Sí, sí se puede. puede. Right. Sí, se puede. Okay, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. And I hope to see gracias. you in the physical world, hopefully next year. Yes. yes. Thank you. Gracias. 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 Gracias.